Got some big news out, guys. We have China launching their new rival to the World Bank. It's known as the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, or AIIB for short, and it's backed by $100 billion worth of capital. It's got 20 other nations on board. This is to be seen as a direct challenge to the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank, which are both globalist-run banking centers. Now, many of you are familiar with the World Bank and how that's used to dictate policy and control other nations, but you might not be aware of the Asian Development Bank, which I'll show you right now is not Asian-centric whatsoever. As we can see, the majority of the voting is, lies with the European Union. We've got Japan in at number two, which is very Western-aligned. It's more Western-aligned than it is more seen as an Asian country, although it is part of Asia. And then you've got the United States at number three. Now, just have a look at how much power is centralised in those three groups. Fairly substantial. And then when you look at it, you've also got Australia and Canada in there as well. Now, those five basically all, they're run by the same people. So they almost, what is it, almost 50% there, um, dictating onto all these other players how it's going to be. Now, there's a few nations that didn't attend. One of them was expected. That was Japan. Obviously, they've got their issues at the moment with China in the East China Sea over the islands there. But also, we had Australia, Indonesia, and South Korea that were absent, and that was following pressure from Washington. Now, this has been confirmed by the Australian Financial Review, which stated that the US Secretary of State, John Kerry, personally asked the Australian Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, to steer clear from joining the AIIB. Now, this is a great example of the United States doing what the United States does best, and that's meddling in other people's foreign policy, basically sticking their nose where they have no business. And it's greatly summed up here by a former Chinese commerce minister who states that you could think of it as a basketball game in which the US wants to set the duration of the game, the size of the court, the height of the basket, and everything else to suit itself. So what we're seeing is this is being set up to basically move away from the current centralized banking centers like the World Bank, the IMF, the Asian Development Bank. I mean, we're seeing more and more of this over the past few months and even weeks where countries are sidestepping the US dollar in international trade, you know, the world reserve currency and moving into bilateral trade agreements and moving into the yuan and acquiring large sums of physical precious metals. I mean, we've seen Venezuela had their gold return. We've seen Germany trying to repatriate their gold. We've got the Swiss voting on November 30th to get their gold back. Um, we've got China and Russia that are buying hand over fist as much gold as they can get. So what we're seeing is a big shift on the global economic stage and when we look back at this, I think in a few you know, decades to come, I think this is going to be seen as a pivotal moment in that change. I mean, it's not the only one. We're seeing almost daily now news coming out about how nations are drastically changing their economic policies. And I think this is only going to increase as it goes forward. Rest assured, we will be covering it. So get subscribed down below. Give us a like if you want to see more videos like this. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and get the latest developments as they break on hangthebankers.com. Thanks for watching.